Weddings are universal. They've been practiced across the globe since, well, before recorded time. Different cultures have added their own flavors and traditions, but some elements never change. One thing is certain, marriage will change your life. And it's also the perfect illustration for another major life event. But before we get to that, welcome to Mornings with Bishop Robert, where we're all about seeing lives changed. Because <laughs> my goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So if our time together today speaks to your heart, let me invite you to like, subscribe, and share this with a friend. Well, we all know that weddings join two people and make them into one family. Now, over time, that family may grow through the addition of children, and, and that will surely change many elements of its nature. But at the core remain the two who became one. God designed marriage. Jesus taught that from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man would leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. In a Christian marriage, the couple are joined together by God, not the minister leading the service. That's why Jesus said that what God has joined together, man should not separate. It's not a mere civil act, but a spiritual one. Now, we're going to round a corner, and we're going to apply the illustration of marriage to another life-changing event. Now, you'll want to focus in close for a bit, because I want to share something that's important. And frankly, it goes a little deeper than I typically do. But it is important, and, and so I think it's worth the extra effort. So let's dive into it together, shall we? Today's verse says, repent and be baptized. Now, a couple days ago in Finding Love, we spoke about knowing true love when you see it. Not just recognizing it, but taking hold of it. Then yesterday in Simple Math, we spoke about what repentance is turning around, changing direction. But that begs the question, if I've decided to turn around and begin walking with Jesus, how do I do that? Well, once you've recognized the love of Jesus, once you know how much he wants a relationship with you and have decided that you want a relationship with him too, what's next? Well, the first part of the verse talks about establishing the relationship. That's the repent part. You've recognized that you've been going in the wrong direction. You decide to change that. So in, instead of walking alone, you decide to turn around and start following Jesus. It's a commitment of faith that begins a relationship of love. You tell God that the thoughts Words and actions of your heart have been leading you away from him, and now you know it. You thank him for forgiving all your sin through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus. You give him your life and ask him to fill you with his. Now, in the realm of human relationships, when one person has agreed to give themselves to another exclusively and forever, they get married. It's a statement of the depth of their love and the strength of their commitment. In the realm of spiritual relationships, when a person has agreed to give themselves to Jesus Christ exclusively and forever, they don't get married. They get baptized. And it, too, is a public statement of the depth of their love and the strength of their commitment. And in both cases, God does something spiritual and significant that's, well, above and beyond the, the mere physical actions that can be seen with the naked eye. 
baptism is to faith what marriage is to a couple. You see, the couple already love one another deeply. The marriage is just intended to declare that officially and publicly. Already joined together emotionally, God joins them spiritually and invites them to be joined together physically. And as the two become one, they become the channel from which new life can flow. They've become a unique family and at the same time have been joined to one another's existing families in a true and, and even a legal manner. The outward visible sign of a marriage are the vows and often a ring. But only part of what's taking place can be seen with our physical eyes. The spiritual changes in a marriage at a wedding are the most significant. Friends, baptism has striking parallels. You already love God deeply. Baptism's just intended to declare that officially and publicly. In baptism, God joins you spiritually with Christ in his death and resurrection and invites you to be joined together physically as you live out your life for him. Thus joined to him, you become the channel from which new life can flow as you allow him to empower you by his spirit and you use the gifts and talents that he's given you to advance his kingdom here on earth. In baptism, you're joined to his church, which is his existing family on earth in a true and, and legal manner. And just like with marriage, only part of what's taking place can be seen with our physical eyes. The spiritual changes are the most significant. Marriage doesn't create the relationship between the couple. It codifies it. It makes it official. It marks it off as something that everyone recognizes as, as focused and dedicated. It's a public proclamation the couple intends to stay together until death parts them. Baptism says all the same thing, except that death will not part you from Christ. In both marriage and baptism, God does something specific and deliberate. And as he does, the very nature of the relationship is forever changed. Both marriage and baptism are acts of incredible faith, trust, love, and commitment to the other party. Both will change your life forever. If you've come to love Jesus and have turned around to walk with him, he's proposing. He's asking, who wants to publicly and permanently commit their life to him? Isn't it time to say, I do, I do, I do. Repent and be baptized. I hope that illustration from marriage helps you understand baptism better. <laughs> I'm confident many of you will have questions. <laughs> this was so short and so quick. And trust me, I'd love to answer them. I really would. Feel free to drop them in the comments section if, if they're a, a question you think might help other folks understand baptism better. But you can even message me if you want it to be a private question. Remember, please like this video so more people see it. And don't forget to follow or subscribe so that you and I can get together every day. And one more thing, of course, share this with a friend, would you? Because as you do, you're part of the team advancing the life of Christ. You're part of the team touching hearts all over the world with the love of Jesus. 
Thanks for helping.